Hello folks, welcome to our canal channel, I'm Jose. Today we're going to show you, give you an idea how to replace the lower control arm on the passenger side for a 2007 to 2017 Toyota Camry. For this procedure, it's going to require to take the passenger side motor mount out. So we have to lift the engine up a little bit and we're going to have to take as well the upper uh, damper or dog bone that they call out and we're going to have to loosen the front motor mount as well so two components are coming out and one component is going to be uh, loose so the engine can actually lift so we have to get to a 22 millimeter bolt that is holding this bad boy to the frame so that way you get an idea how we did it and if you want to do it or take it to a shop to have this uh, control arm replaced and with that said let's jump right into it so we're going to be replacing the lower control arm on the passenger side on our camry and to do that, we have we have that brand new control arm here. What we did is we lift their car, put it on jack stands, and then we are gonna have to take the braking system off because backing plate is gonna prevent the ball joint from coming out from there. But one more thing is that we have lifted and set the driver side on jack stands as well because the sway bar can send pressure through the suspension from one side to this side and we don't want that we want that suspension as relaxed as we can have it so we can do this job so what we have done is we have turned our wheel like we're making a right turn so we can expose the bolts in the back more so we can have more angle to take out the, the two 17 millimeter bolts that hold the caliper against the spindle and then before we do that we've got to compress our piston a little bit in so once we take those two bolts off this comes out and there's no uh, we don't have to struggle on sliding it off the rotor and then once we do that we attach it to the spring on the coil so that hangs the weight of it here and it doesn't hang on the uh, braking hose so then we take the rotor off and then the backing plate that keeps ball joint from coming out so we have to take that off so that's going to clear this area as well So now what we do is we grab a piece of wire and then we wrap it around the structure of the caliper and then we attach it to the coil on the uh, strut so that way it hangs from there and the weight is held by this wire into the coil and it doesn't damage your brake hose. Now we remove our brake rotor. So this might be stuck. So what we're gonna be doing is we're just gonna tap here so the vibration loosen it and it can come off. So now that we remove our rotor, we have to remove the splash guard. Four screws or bolts that hold it down. One, two, three, four. We're gonna have to remove these by using a T30 bit, like this. And to turn this, we're going to be using a quarter inch tubing wrench so it has better grip. And we're going to be doing it like this. That's the trick for us because there's not much space between here or a straight shot to get a. We don't want to strip those screws. So now that we have removed that four T30s, we can remove or get that splash guard away from the ball joint. So when we have to take it off, it goes down. So what we have done is we have removed the splash guard because this ball joint, we have to take that pin that goes through the nut to loosen that nut. And then we have to drop that ball joint out of the spindle. But with the splash guard being there, we couldn't drop it because it drops in an angle. So that's the reason why we had to uh, get the splash car out of there. So then another thing is we have to remove that motor mount to get that 22 millimeter on the front. And then we have to remove that 22 millimeter on the back right there. And then we have to remove this back long bolt that goes through for the rear part. That's the one right there. That's a 22 millimeter in the back. That's the one that goes in front, towards the front, underneath the motor mount. And this is the 
ball joint. We're going to start by removing the nut on the ball joint and then because that's going to take some effort and then we're going to start by loosening the other bolts and then we'll lift the engine up so we can get the motor mount out and do the last 22 millimeter bolt in there. So this is how the cutter pin underneath had to be. It came from the front to the back. But we're explaining this with a brand new one because we couldn't get the camera in there. So what we do is we straighten it out one end and then we pull it, bring it out. And now we can turn the nut because this nut, as it was sitting there, the cutter pin goes through the hole and prevents that nut from spinning. So once you take that off, you can uh, loosen that nut and take it all the way out so we can loosen the so we can take out the ball joint it's tampered that's why it's pulled in and so it's going to be stuck in there so we have to probably hit it or use the, the ball joint spreader to bring it out it's a 90 millimeter so then we can start taking the ball joint out So we don't have the ball joint spreader. What we're going to have to do is tap here. So with the hits and the vibration, this one will spit it out. So as you can see, the ball joint is loose now. It has come off, but we're not going to take it off completely because we want to keep the spindle in its place so the drive shaft don't come off. So the one we take everything off that we need to, the rear bolt, the 22 millimeter. So now we go back there and we take out the 70 millimeter. So now we have taken off the rear 22 millimeter bolt. We have one more right in, underneath this motor mount, which is in the passenger side. And we have to loosen and taking off all the nuts that hold this motor mount towards the motor and the chassis. And then before we lift the motor, we have to go into the front and loosen the front motor mount as well. We start by removing this 19 millimeter on the passenger side uh, motor mount on the top. So now that we have removed that 19 millimeter nut on the top, what we can do is we come down here and then we have to remove one, two, three 70 millimeter nuts so we can get this motor mount uh, free from the subframe. So here they are, three nuts that hold this motor mount to the subframe. So now we have taken or loosened the rear bolt completely. We have loosened the ball joint it's freely, so it's just hanging in there with a nut. So now we have taken off the 122 millimeter for the front off, and now we have one right underneath the motor mount. And then we have taken off the three nuts in the bottom, 70 millimeters, and the top 19 millimeter for the motor mount to come out. Because now we have to go up, and then we have to loosen the motor mount on the top on the front for the front motor mount. So now we got the plastic to cover this area and the intake box from this area off. There it is, a 70 millimeter bolt. You just gotta loosen it and leave a couple of threads in there so it guides the motor as it comes up and down so it doesn't misguide itself. That's gonna help as a guide as well. So we loosen it and we bring it in a couple of threads, two or three threads. So the engine is, is gonna be guided back to, to fall right where it needs to fall in. So we wanna show you about how much is the bolt unthreaded. So there's about two or three threads grabbing. So then that's gonna help the bolt as a guide when the motor comes up and down so we don't misplace it. So that's working as a guide as well. So now what we're gonna be doing as well is we're gonna take out this um, uh, dog bone from up here and it's gonna be a 14 millimeter uh, two on the top and one on the side. This is a long one. So that way the motor goes up and up more freely and it's not being guided by this guy. So that way uh, uh, I don't work, I don't fight this uh, motor mount as well.
Now that we have removed the dog bone, this is loose. The bottom motor mount, we raise the engine, so this is not going to be fighting what we do. So now to take this motor mount out, we're going to lift our engine, and some of you are going to agree and some are going to disagree, but I have put a piece of wood right underneath the oil pan with a jack, and I have put a long wood so it covers more surface, less tension to one concentrating point, so that way I cover more of the surface on the oil pan, and it's going to lift slowly, so that way I, I don't put the metal to metal with the jack and concentrate the spot onto the oil pan, so that way I can lift and get this motor mount out, and this is what works for me in the past, so this is what I'm going to be doing, but uh, this is the only spot that I found that I can lift the engine from the bottom by using this method. So now I lift and get that motor mount out. And now that we have removed the motor mount, there's that 22 millimeter bolt that we have to remove. One thing also that when you're taking the, the motor mount, this hydraulic line that goes right here might be on top of it. So you got to kind of push it inwards a little bit so you can get the motor mount up and out so we can get to this uh, bolt. Now we remove the bolt completely. Now the control arm is free from the inside, so we, now we have to remove the ball joint nut and drop it and then bring it out. Look at this one, completely torn and ripped. It's just holding in there by the pressure, but it's completely split. Another thing is that when we brought it out on the rear 22 millimeter, there's this plate that goes like this. So it sits in there's a bottom like this on the rear one. Don't forget to put this in the new one. So now we grab our brand new control arm. We put the, the plate that came out into the new one and we slide it in. First thing we did is we fed our control arm in the bottom, the rear part, so we were able to guide that 70 millimeter ball through, and then we can put the nut in there, just put it there, present it so it doesn't come out. Now we can swing the control arm around underneath the whole this, the, uh, all the stuff, and then start uh, adjusting it and tightening it. Now that we have slided our control arm, we start putting in the 22 millimeter bolt so we can put our motor mount and then lower the, the motor. So what we're gonna have to do is to line up these bolts because they don't go through, is because it has too much tilt. We have to remove these bolts from the control arm to the uh, ball joint. So that way we can swing the ball joint away and then raise the control arm so we can tilt it and give us a angle so we can feed these 22 millimeter bolts. So now that we have put that 22 millimeter bolt and guided it, we tighten it with our impact gun. And now we can tighten the rear one. And remember that the plate that was right between in there needs to go in there. So now that we have put those 22 millimeter bolts in for the control arm, now we can put the motor mount in, drop our engine slowly so everything lines up. So now, now the engine is resting into the motor mount and no more jack is needed. Remember the hydraulic line that goes back there, you're gonna kinda have to move the motor mount between it and the subframe so you can get the, the studs to go in and especially on the back over there, push it back a little bit, the hydraulic line. So once you set that, you can start lowering the engine and then kind of tilt the motor mount to guide it into the motor.
Now what we do is we put the upper stud nut in the bottom ones and tighten them up for the motor mount. So now we're gonna just tighten this motor mount. Now we can tighten the three bottom nuts for the motor mount. They're 17 millimeters. So now that we have tightened the motor mount, now we can go and tighten that rear bolt for the control arm, which is a 19 millimeter. So now we have tightened that bolt as well. We put the two 22 millimeters, tightening them down. We put the motor mount, tightening them as well. And then we go and tighten the front motor mount, and then we put the upper motor mount as well, so we don't forget. And then we come over here. So now we have to tighten down the 70 millimeter bolt that we loosened for the front motor mount, so we were able to lift the motor and tilt it from the one passenger side or driver side, wherever you're working, you have to loosen that bolt. So we took the dog bone, which is called, but it's a motor mount or damper on the top on the passenger side off so we could actually raise the engine straight up otherwise with this it will be pulling it backwards and it will be kind of pulling it downwards as well so we took this out with the motor mount from the bottom as well so two two mounts came off from the passenger side and the front mount, mount was loosened so we were able to raise the engine straight up otherwise with this in here we would be fighting the engine and it wouldn't come up. So we had to take this one out. So we put it back in. And these bolts are 14 millimeters. There's three long ones, one, two, three and a shorter one over here towards the frame. So at this point we have put in the upper uh, motor mount or the, the passenger upper motor mount or dog bone, what they call it. And we tie in the uh, front motor mount down so we can uh, now the motor is secure here. We had to take that one out and the bottom one to, tilt, to lift the motor out to get the motor mount out on the bottom to get the 22 millimeter off. That's why we did it. So now that we have done that, we'll come back and put those plastics back on. And now what we have to do is we have to put the ball joint back in because we took it off to be able to line up in there. Now we put it in, tighten it down, and then we can start putting all the braking system back in. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put the ball joint here first and then going to line it up into the control arm. This will be harder for me. The one thing that you want to do before you start tightening in this ball joint is that when you put it in, you want to make sure that hole when it goes in to the spindle is lined up from the front to the back with the spindle so that way when you and you can tighten it right there and that way when you are putting the little clip or the the securing pin or pull or wire is accessible from the front to the back and you can bend it otherwise if it's like this you're going to have a hard time so why not tighten it right there and then you can deal with the ball joint with the other half later on when you can turn it so we'll tighten it here and show you what we mean by that now we tighten the ball joint nut so we have set the nut for the ball joint but we cannot tighten it completely because this thing is loose and it's bouncing around so what we're going to be doing is we're going to put this into the control arm and then tighten it. And then we can come back and tighten this completely and because everything is going to be more solid. Right now it's bouncing, as you can see, back and forth. So we cannot get a good grip. So we're going to put everything back together and then we come back and tighten that ball joint and then we put the clip through.
Now we have to tighten that ball joint from that knot right there. So now we have tightened that ball joint, and as you can see, we can see light through the hole where the clip or the cutter pin goes through. So we put it, bend it, so that prevents that knot from spinning off and this whole thing coming off from the spindle. We tighten that area too, everything's tight. So now we start, we put the clip, bend it, and we come over to put the braking system back on because we had to remove the splash guard for this to come off. So now we can put the splash guard for the rotor and the brakes back on with the four uh, T30 screws or bolts. So now that we tighten those four T30 uh, screws or bolts so we can secure that splash guard, now we can put our rotor, now we can put our rotor and put, then we can put our caliper back on. Now we can put the bolts into the caliper to secure it to the base and then we can tighten them. Well, folks, here it is, a replacement of a lower control arm for the passenger side on a 2010 Toyota Camry. Uh, here it is. As you can see, it's all broken. And now we have a brand new lower control arm on the passenger side. We have tightening it, everything. Everything is on place. We just need to put the tire back on. And uh, we have to put these plastics back on so we can get the car back to normal and take it for an alignment. This is about one full day of work because the passenger side is more trickier than the driver's side due to the damper and uh, the hydraulic line in there. But uh, this is the final product. There's the old one now. Well, folks, hopefully this video was useful and helpful on how to replace the lower control arm on the passenger side for a 2007 to 2017 Toyota Camry. And the one thing we had to do, like we said in the beginning, is we had to lift the engine off so we could get one of the motor mounts out so we can get to the one of the bolts that holds this control arm to the chassis, which is that bolt is a 22 millimeter and it's right underneath that uh, motor mount. So we have to remove the dog bone, where it just go, it's in the top, it's kind of like a damper. And we have to loosen the front motor mount as well, so we can get all that uh, clearance. And then the other tricky part is getting the ball joint out. So that was another one. So uh, just take your time if you want to do this. But if you feel like you want to take it to a shop and get it done. And we replaced both sides, and we're going to leave the link for the driver's side, so you can see what was done on that side compared to what was done in this side. So they're similar, it's just more, a little bit more components on the passenger side. So with that said, folks, for our friends who are watching our video and haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up, share it, and we'll see you soon with more videos here in the canal, El Chano Jose.